Hi, I'm Kimberly with The Fat Quarter Shop, and today I'm going to show you how to attach binding to your quilt with a double fold technique. I struggled with binding for a lot of years, and I came up with my methods through trial and error, and I think my techniques will really help you give that perfect finish to your quilt. Here are the basic supplies you will need. A basic sewing machine with a straight stitch, an open toe foot, a quarter inch foot, and a walking foot, sewing machine needles, 100% cotton thread to match your binding fabric, a marking pin, hand needles for binding, a seam ripper, two pairs of scissors, one for cutting thread and one for cutting fabric, a rotary cutter, the binding tool ruler, pins and a pin cushion, clover wonder clips, a simplicity bias tape maker with a one and a quarter inch tip, two rulers, a long skinny ruler, and a small square ruler, and the last thing you need is an iron. Today I'm going to show you how to put binding on this 18 inch square quilt. And just remember with binding there's lots of ways to put binding on and today I'm just going to show you what works best for me. So let's first talk about thread. I always use 100% cotton thread. Today I'm going to use Arafil 50 weight and you're going to want to pick a thread color that exactly matches your fabric. And you're going to use your thread for both the machine piecing and your hand stitching. What I do is I wind a bobbin half full. That's enough thread for the entire project and then at the end your bobbin is empty and you, you don't have any wasted thread. So normally I would be using this Arafil gray thread. But today I'm going to use black so you can really see what I'm doing. Now let's talk about how many strips you need to cut for your binding. If you're following a pattern, it will usually tell you how many strips to cut. But if your pattern doesn't tell you, this is the formula. Take the perimeter of your quilt and add 30 inches, then divide by 40 inches, which is the width of your fabric. Today we have an 18 inch square quilt. Take 18 times 4, add 30, that's 102 inches. Divide by 40, and that's going to give you 2.5. So. We're going to cut three strips. Let's start cutting. So I'm going to use two rulers for this step. To make sure this line is perfectly straight, I'm going to line up the ruler on the fold. And then I'm going to take a second ruler, line it up, and then what that does is it makes this line accurate because you use this ruler for lining it up. And we don't need this ruler anymore. We're just going to cut across. And then you always need to cut your salvage off. So I'm going to go ahead and do it now because we're going to make three strips. And if I do it now, then I only have one cut instead of three. So again, I'm going to line up the ruler on this edge. I'm going to kind of look to make sure that we're going to get all the salvage off. I like to cut a big chunk off instead of a small, just to make sure that we don't have any salvage left. The cut. And then we're going to make our three cuts. So we're going to cut two and a half inch strips. I'm going to line up this line and this line. Cut. We'll cut again. And when I'm doing this, I'm not moving this fabric at all because this is what needs to stay straight. You can move these, but not this. So we've got our three strips. And now we need to join our strips. So we're going to put one strip down, right sides up. The next strip on top. We're going to draw a line. And we're going to sew on this line to join our strips. And when you're sewing, you really need to get to this point where, where it intersects. So if you have, for example, if you had lined up exactly like this, you can't see where you're supposed to intersect. So having it like this, you know exactly where you need to go and you're going to get a more accurate stitch. 
We'll do the same thing for the next strip. And then we're going to go to the sewing machine. We're going to use an open toe foot so you can really see where you're stitching and use a 2.0 stitch length and join these strips together. So now we're just going to sew directly on our drawn line. So we're going to cut up a little bit to get that. Cut a quarter inch away and approximately a quarter inch is fine. Do the same thing. So let's iron our strips and in the center where your fabric was folded there's usually still a crease so I'm at this point going to press that out. I use steam to get those out and then here we're going to want to press open. It's very important to press open or your binding will have a bubble to it and you'll be able to tell where your seams were joined so this is a very important step. Now what you need to do is put your fabrics wrong sides together and press and you can either do that with your iron or I'm going to show you how to use the Simplicity Bias Tape Maker to make your step go a lot faster. So the way that I like to use this machine is a little bit different than the manufacturer suggests. I leave it plugged in for 10 minutes. Make sure your ready light's on. It's set to cotton. And then this gets really hot and this is an iron. So you do not want to touch this silver plate. So first step is to put this on right before you use it, not any time before. Then you're going to take your fabric right sides up, cut a 45 degree angle, use a one and a quarter inch tip, push your fabric in, you've got to pull it through with a seam ripper. And then you're just going to make sure it's coming out flat. Push the tip in. Pull it through. Push the button run. It's going to just spit your binding out. Folds it, irons it. When you get to where your seam is, you're just going to kind of push it in gently. Since you've ironed your seams open, it goes right through. Now we're ready to prepare our quilt top to attach the binding. I have my quilts prepared at a long arm quilter and I ask them to leave the batting and the backing attached so I can trim them down. We're going to trim 3 8 of an inch towards the outside of the quilt top. So we're going to trim out here away from the quilt top and we're going to leave 3 8 of an inch of batting and backing on. I'm going to use a very large ruler because you have a lot of thickness under you and having a large ruler it's less likely to slip. And so I'm just going to align the 3 8 inch, is three markings over, and then I'm going to just cut. And you can see that we've left 3 8 of an inch on the quilt top. We're going to trim all four sides this way. And now 
now that it's trimmed, we've got the corners that I'm going to clip off so that when you attach your binding, you don't have bulk in your corner. Now since we're using the binding tool, we're going to make two marks 12 inches apart. You can do this on any side of the quilt you want. You want to make sure you're away from your corners as much as possible and you want to make these markings as exact as you can. We're going to mark both on the quilt top and on the batting and we're going to make a very dark mark. So now we're ready to attach our binding strips to our quilt. You're going to put your folded edge on the left, your raw edge on the right, and you're going to extend this tail past the first marking. And then I'm going to put one pin in right near the marking where we're going to start, and I'm going to draw this line. The reason we drew on the batting was so that we can see the line where we start and I'm going to extend it onto your binding fabric so that's exactly where you start because it's very important on this step to have an accurate start and an accurate end that's 12 inches exact. On this step we're going to use a 2.5 stitch length and a walking foot. The walking foot is going to just glide that fabric straight through your machine and if you don't have a walking foot your fabric might jam and we're going to start exactly at this purple line. So what I do, we're also going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to push down my needle directly into that purple line so that I know I'm starting at the right spot. I'm going to take two to three stitches and then back stitch. That's going to lock in your stitch. Okay, so I'm going to make a dot exactly where the edge of my quilt top is onto my fabric because then I know my corner is there. Then with my ruler, I've got my ruler set to be a quarter inch from the bottom and the side and I'm going to make a little square. And that way I know I'm exactly a quarter inch from the edge and I'm going to stitch all the way to this line. And we're not going to cut the stitch. We're going to rotate the quilt and back stitch off at an angle. Then cut your stitch. The reason you do that is if you cut your stitch here and fold your binding back, your stitches will unravel. So if you accidentally cut your thread, you really need to start that stitch over and go backwards at an angle. So to fold back the edge, we're going to fold back at a 45 degree angle. Finger press your fabric. Pull your fabric back at a 90 degree angle. You want this at a 90 degree angle. The top and the left aligned with your quilt top. We're going to start stitching on your batting, then onto your binding. We're going to go to the next corner and repeat the same step. So as you're sewing, you want to make sure the raw edge of your binding is exactly aligned with your quilt top. Draw a quarter inch.
now we're coming to our stop position and we're going to draw a line again so we can stop exactly on our purple line and we're going to back stitch once we get there. Okay, now we're going to lay our quilt out and we're going to measure from point to point. We need to make sure we're exactly 12 inches from point to point for the binding tool to work. We're exactly correct. If you aren't, then you want to adjust your stitches to be 12 inches apart. Today we're going to be using the binding tool. One tip for this tool is, remember, left you're going to use the line and right you're going to use the tip. We're going to work on our left side first and remember left on the line. So you're going to put your ruler always right sides up. And place your binding strip very tight on there. I'm going to place a mark at the top of the line on the ruler and the bottom of the line. I'm going to open my strip and I'm going to draw a line on the dots. And then I'm going to line up the line on my line and we're going to cut. Okay, now our left side is done and we're going to go to our right side. Remember, keep your ruler right sides up. Flip the ruler to the other side. Pull your fabric over. Keep it taut. Make a dot at the top of the line, the bottom of the line. Again, we're going to draw a line. Now remember, on the right side, we're going to use the tip. So this time, we're going to line up the ruler with the tip, since you're on the right side and we're going to draw a line. We're not going to cut from this angle. Then I like to just flip the quilt around. Place the ruler back where your marked line was and cut. Now we're ready to join our strips. I always join my strips by pinning before I, I go to the sewing machine so I don't accidentally sew the wrong way because I have done that quite a few times. You put your fabrics right sides together and I'm going to pin three times. I'm going to pin the first point, the other edge, and the center. Then I'm going to kind of push it together, make an envelope, and just move the quilt away. We're going to go to the sewing machine, and use a quarter inch seam allowance, and a 2.0 stitch length. So for this step, I switched to a quarter inch foot to make this easier. We're just going to sew straight down the seam. So now we're at the ironing table and we're going to press open our last section. The same method, you're going to press open, finger press, run the iron across the center. We're going to line up the raw edges and the edge of the quilt top and press. And then I like to pin here so that you don't have any puckers when you get to the machine. So we're going to go to the sewing machine and run our last stitch. We have our walking foot again. We're going to use a 2.5 stitch length and a quarter inch seam allowance. 
We're going to start a little bit before your starting stitch and a little bit after your finishing stitch. Now we're almost to the end. I'm going to show you how I do some ironing tricks to get that nice crisp finish. So I'm first going to press down in between our corners and just flatten your seam. Now I'm going to press your binding strips out. I'm going to finger press first. And then we're going to put the iron edge right at the crease and press out. You want to press really hard. That's going to make it really flat. It's going to give you a crisp edge here to do your hand stitching on next and it's just going to make it look really pretty here. So finger press first. I'm using a lot of steam here too. Next I'm going to use my Clover Wonder Clips and I keep in my box my scissors and my binding needles and I've got my bobbin that's left over so we can use the leftover thread and we're going to just push over and you can see when you fold over, your binding is using all this batting. So because of the way we've done our, our binding, you're going to have a really thick binding and you won't have any loose fabric here and that's what really makes this binding great. So you're going to clip over just past your stitching. And I like to clip every three inches all the way around the quilt. This is going to really help you when you're hand binding and save you a lot of time. So now we have everything clipped and I'm going to show you how to do your hand stitching on the back. I've got my needles. Take some thread, maybe 15 to 20 inches, and this is how I'm going to make a knot. Okay, so I'm going to actually lick my finger so it'll grab the thread, make a circle around my finger, and then roll. And then if you pull, it just makes a knot. Then I'm going to clip the end. So I'm going to put my needle around the edge so that you don't see the end. I'm going to come up right past your machine stitch and pull it out. That way this knot is always hidden. I'm going to pull my fabric fold right to the outside edge of your stitch. I'm going to use a whip stitch and come up through the binding fold right in that crease that we made when we were ironing. And I'm going to use a whip stitch and go down where we just started and come up. I'm going to make tiny, tiny stitches. maybe an eighth of an inch or less apart and just keep going and you want to make sure you go down right where you come up and just go up an eighth of an inch just keep stitching and when you're using 
thread that's the same color as your fabric, you're not going to see your stitches at all. We're going to stitch all the way till we get to the corner where you see the stitch, your machine, machine stitch. Okay, there I'm going to make a double stitch where I just go back in again and then I'm going to make a knot by coming up through and knotting it because that just really holds that. I'm going to turn the quilt. I'm going to push the fabric down and make a 45 degree angle right there and place a clover wonder clip. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to make sure that you've got a 45 degree angle on the other side. So on the front and the back, it looks perfect. Okay, so from where we made the knot, we're going to push the needle up in that point. And we're going to just Keep going the same way we've been going. And since you're in that corner, you've got a lot of fabric and it kind of gets tight. But you're going to just keep going the same way we've been stitching. We're going to stitch all the way to the end. And I've added a label so that I can remember when I made my quilt. So my label has my name, the year, and the website of my pattern company. If you are making a label, you might want to put your phone number so if your quilt is lost, you can find your quilt. When you stitch over your label, you're going to want to go through your label and through the back of your quilt so that it holds all the way on. So you go through all layers, obviously not through the front of the quilt. On your last stitch, you're going to come up Go back in the quilt and come back up at the same exact spot. You'll form a loop, pull your needle through your circle and make a slip knot, make it tight, put your needle back in the same spot and come back through the top. You'll pull it tight and cut, your thread will disappear and you'll never see that knot. I know binding can seem intimidating, but I hope I've empowered you to try this at home. Please comment below and let me know how your binding turns out, and thanks for watching.